It is over 40 years since the last major international symposium on materials for the mining industry took place. It was held in Colorado, USA, and highlighted the importance of wear on materials and its potential impact on the industry. Clearly, therefore, a new initiative was long overdue. Compania Brasileira de Metodologia e Mineração, CBMM, recently grasped this opportunity and in May 2015 hosted the International Symposium Ware Resistant Alloys for the Mining and Processing Industry in the city of Campinas in Brazil. CBMM, the world's premier supplier of niobium and niobium applications technology, invited some 170 international delegates to the event and over three days, expert speakers from across the globe openly shared their experiences. Papers were presented on abrasion-resistant high-strength steels, forgings, castings, hard-facing alternatives and intrinsically hard metals. Mining and processing companies and equipment manufacturers were also present to outline their current and future requirements and to discuss the overall needs of specific applications. All mechanical engineering components have a finite design life based on their projected workload and the environment in which they are expected to operate. Premature failure or unanticipated early removal from service is uncommon, but when this does happen, it is much more likely to be as a consequence of wear rather than brittle fracture, fatigue, creep or other more widely publicized mechanisms. The moving parts of heavy mining machinery, for example, or the rotating components of rolls or bearings are obvious examples of situations where abrasive wear can intervene to dramatically shorten the desired life of an engineering component. Wear is perhaps not such a high-profile area of materials research and technological focus, but there can be no doubt that it should command our utmost attention. It is high time we really sat up and took notice, as the process of wear has severe economic consequences not only through direct replacement costs, but also losses associated with machine downtime and lost production. In the UK and in Germany, machine component wear has been estimated to be one of the costliest industrial problems, equating to around 0.25% of turnover and up to 1% of GNP. In both countries, more than 50% of the financial losses have resulted from abrasive wear. The Australian mining industry also loses over a billion dollars per annum as a consequence of direct wear on heavy equipment and machinery. Later, we will take a closer look at several specific wear mechanisms and scenarios, but having noted already that abrasive wear is the most prevalent and costly, we will now explain why the subject is of such interest to the sponsor of this event, CBMM. The classic engineer's rule of thumb states that the harder the material, the better the resistance against abrasive wear. This latter view was held for many years, but eventually research began to indicate that resistance to abrasion not only correlated with hardness, but with toughness. Steel performance in an abrasive situation therefore needs to balance hardness and toughness to produce an optimum product, and in this context, Niobium is the key alloying element which can enable the steelmaker and fabricator to achieve this objective. We will learn more about Niobium's remarkable role in this context later when we explore specific examples of recent progress. The term wear covers a multitude of specific mechanisms, some of which are closely related and some of which operate synergistically. But abrasive wear taken together with erosion accounts for more than 60% of the costs to industry. Adhesive wear is the next most prevalent problem, followed by fretting and various fatigue mechanisms. There are many other mechanisms, such as fluid, cavitation and electrical erosion, and whilst their contributions to industry costs are substantially lower, they are all of significance in their own right. The study of wear and its various mechanisms is described by the relatively new field of science referred to as tribology. The term derives from the Greek word tribos, meaning rubbing or sliding. There is no single solution to an individual wear problem. Each situation and application is unique, often combining a range of wear mechanisms and frequently exacerbated by the presence of corrosion. It's likely, therefore, that the answer is specific to the case in question. 
and this also implies that the development of a successful laboratory test to predict performance is fraught with problems. Sometimes the solution is to combine better wear resistance with stronger, lighter weight material and novel design. We will learn more about all these aspects by considering an overview of selected presentations from our highly successful symposium. Welcoming guests to the technical sessions, Marcos Stewart, Director of Technology for CBMM, provided his audience with background information on niobium, its origins and qualities, before setting out the scope and strategy of his company's technology development program. With some 140 projects around the globe, with customers, research centers and universities covering all the key technical aspects of niobium's unique role in steel, he described CBMM's philosophy to add value to the supply chain. In the context of niobium in wear-resistant alloys, he illustrated niobium carbide's place in the hardness spectrum of alloys and cermets, indicating that more would be revealed in individual presentations. Finally, Marcos invited delegates to make the most of this unique opportunity by sharing knowledge and engaging in open technical dialogue during each session. Groups of common theme papers were then presented over the next two and a half days in four sessions. We will now hear a summary of each session. Showcase of mining companies and equipment manufacturers. The principal focus of this session was on heavy items of equipment common to many mining and ore processing operations. Key papers included operational details from copper, molybdenum and niobium ore miners, and more general contributions providing information on how specific wear mechanisms impact on ore handling and subsequent processing. Primary ore is often initially transported from mines using massive earth-moving equipment, and key wear and design issues were discussed in some detail in two interesting papers from China and Brazil. Highlighting the major wear problems and performance of such equipment, it was revealed how lightweight design and modification of steel metallurgy using niobium microalloying could significantly enhance design life and performance through reduced wear. Such innovation also reduces overall transportation costs through reduced fuel costs and material savings. Decreasing quality of many ore grades throughout the world leads to increased volumes of material to be transported and more intense processing. It is not uncommon, therefore, for the successful extraction of one ton of usable ore to result in the production of up to 90 times as much waste product. Consequently, it is not surprising that the impact of wear and corrosion can cost the world's mining industry billions of dollars per annum. In many instances, the next important operational stage involves reducing ore to suitable sized particles for subsequent processing. This frequently involves the use of fully autogenous or semi-autogenous ball mills, which can be up to 12 meters in diameter. Such ball mills can be internally lined with special materials, including in some cases metal matrix composites, and the various wear and deterioration mechanisms involved were described by authors who demonstrated examples of the impact of such damage on their operations. Failure analysis of ball mill liners often reveals how the repeated impact of ore particles gradually deforms the surface layers of the coating material, causing spalling and fatigue failure. Such damage has a major cost implication for operation economics and efficiency. In some instances, Subsequent operations involve complex leaching operations with acidic environments, and this introduces corrosion, sometimes associated with wear, as an additional design consideration. Abrasion-resistant and ultra-high strength steels. In this session, most papers concentrated on specific developments of steels for particular applications. International contributions from steelmakers, equipment manufacturers and universities combined to provide further insights into the way in which hardness and toughness can be combined to produce optimum wear resistance in plate and tool steels, particularly with martensitic products. It was revealed how in quenched steels, martensitic hardness is largely dictated by carbon content and the martensite start temperature by carbon and manganese levels. 
The important concept of effective grain size or packet size of the martensite was explained by various authors and how the best toughness could be obtained by ensuring packet sizes of less than 10 microns. As noted previously, high hardness is usually associated with lower toughness, but the use of niobium to refine austenite grain size prior to quenching and subsequent thermal processing permit superior combinations of hardness and toughness to be realized. This, as we learned earlier, is the secret to the provision of optimum wear resistance. Different types of end use result in emphasis being placed on either hardness or toughness, depending on the wear mechanism anticipated. However, many applications require some optimum combination of both parameters. Finally, we are reminded of the benefits of using niobium-bearing low-carbon steels in direct quenched or quenched and tempered heavy plate steels, which require both good wear resistance and an ability to be fabricated with reduced preheat. Forgings and castings Whilst this session was primarily concerned with forging and casting products, their design, manufacture and metallurgical blueprints we also learned more about the classification of abrasive wear mechanisms and the challenges of establishing meaningful laboratory tests which can accurately predict performance in specific applications. It was demonstrated that textbook classifications don't always follow or align accurately with practical experience, and with reference to a ball mill case study, it was revealed that the only reliable way to assess likely wear in a ball mill is to do tests with a ball mill. The ASTM pin abrasion test was unlikely to provide accurate predictions, thus underlining the point made earlier about developing new application-specific tests. Many approaches to improving the abrasive wear of specific components were discussed. This included carburizing gear teeth, alloying tool steels, high-speed steels and stainless steels with niobium for additional grain refinement and hardening outer zones of centrifugal tunnel boring machines with niobium carbide. Finally in this session, some interesting information on China's demand for wear-resistant parts was described, and it is clear that abrasive wear of balls and liners for fag and sag ball mills between them make up the major demand. Hard facings and hard metals the final morning of the symposium focused on opportunities for niobium carbide or its complex carbides to find a niche in the hard metals and metal matrix composites sector. A particularly interesting example of the application of niobium carbide to load a bucket teeth using laser cladding was described. The life of surface teeth was 80% greater than the average service life of carbon steel teeth. Various other very specialist presentations looked at phase characterization by nano-identification, thermoreactive diffusion coating techniques, the potential for niobium carbide in cermets, and the use of niobium carbide in cobalt-bearing steels for hard turning. And finally, spark plasma sintering of niobium carbides in alloys for milling and turning. Following the completion of the technical sessions, Hardy Morbacher of Niobalcon, a prominent member of the symposium's technical organizing committee, requested that all participating authors return to the platform to take part in a closing question and answer session. This raised a number of additional issues for future consideration. This was a remarkably successful gathering, and there is no doubt that the opportunity to share experiences and discuss future avenues of research was greatly appreciated. You can also view interviews with selected participants who will explain why the symposium was important from their individual perspectives. The footage also includes interviews with Marcos Stewart and Hardy Moorbacker, respective sponsors and organizers of the symposium. <laughs>